Uh, I've noticed that you grew your tax base. You doubled it uh, during your time in office. How? What tips for other chief executives who who uh, are languishing in 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 slow growth urban areas? Do you have to sort of turbocharge a local economy? Right. You know, the real estate tax base uh, a decade ago was nineteen billion dollars in Richmond. Right. That was the, the valuation. Yes. Now it's thirty eight billion dollars. And I've been lucky to be mayor eight of those last 10 years. And number one, you got to start saying you got to say yes to something. Right. And in the South, we're always uh, it, there's a natural conservatism to 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 risk. Right. Like, you know, it's, no one wants to take risk. And I think sometimes, and, and I read this, then I had to experience it for myself, is the, the, the part of being mayor that sometimes they don't tell you, it's about taking risks. You, you don't know all the, what the answers and the outcomes are going to be 10 years later, 20 years later, but you got to get out there and take calculated risk. And you have to be at the table with the private sector. And the private sector these days, they're following the talent into cities. And lucky enough in Richmond, we've seen those in the DMV move south to Richmond, those in the Hampton Roads area, other states have moved to Richmond. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's because of our cultural work, right? We start removing monuments. Folks told me, oh my gosh, the city of Richmond is going to fall into the earth. The sun may not ever come back up. And the opposite has happened. People have chosen Richmond post the pandemic and the employers are following that talent. And so we've been at the table with some of our larger employers we got CoStar, the, the real estate tech company. That's, you know, they're building their biggest campus uh, in downtown Richmond. We're going to be the tallest tower in all of Virginia. Uh, 2,000 new jobs with the, uh, with the average salary of $90,000 a year. Whew. So not only have we seen a real estate tax base double, over the course of the last decade as well, we've seen household median income go up by 40%, per capita personal income go up by 50%. And poverty has been reduced by 22%. So you got to take some calculated risk on economic development. You got to be at the table with the private sector and businesses. And also you got to recognize that this has to be about inclusivity and you want to see inclusive growth. I want to see not just growth in uh, the neighborhoods where the young professionals are moving into. I want to see growth in those neglected neighborhoods as well. And so how do we redirect dollars and get out there into those neglected neighborhoods in the past and say, you know what, we're going to build a community center here? Because a lot of times when we make that public investment, the private sector will follow. Larry, I think we have the keynote for next year's Philadelphia Citizen. I mean, you yeah, asked for some so. tips. He just did a master yeah. class. Goodness right. gracious. There you go. Laid it out. Yeah. yeah you man, you got to be for something. My, you know what, my, I, what, I, what I was thinking? My tax that. base doubled as a T-shirt. I mean, that, that would be the only T-shirt that I wore when I exercised. <laughs> uh, no, that, that, by the way, that sounded like one of the greatest gubernatorial uh, 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 campaigns I ever heard. But but it's a, now it's a lieutenant gubernatorial. That's a lieutenant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 